Don't be spiritual, be honest instead. I love that. The full quote actually is even doper. Don't be spiritual, be honest instead. It's very painful to pretend yourself beyond your true evolution. It's a quote by Byron Katie. We did a recording recently in a podcast about the work and her process, these questions, and I went through it and I really enjoyed the book and enjoy some of her teachings and some of her ideas. This quote really hit home because of a number of factors. One, it really nicely ties into this theme that I'm practicing daily of loving what is, of being more honest in the moment, being more in this very moment, not in the future, not in the past. And sort of the theme that also connects to the episode about Dostoevsky's truth, like I read a lot of Dostoevsky right now, and hence you're reading a lot of Dostoevsky right now. And in his writings, it's so much human torment because of the inability to be honest. Like it's all a running away from truth that creates greater and greater destructive drama and torment inside and out. So all these things fall into place. And then on top, the cherry that lays there is this, you know, journey that I've been on of understanding myself more, of going deeper and deeper inside of my own psyche, my own heart, my emotions, my body, my soul, that I've come to a great amount of realizations and a lot of change. So it's been a beautiful journey, but not everything that I have understood logically or mentally or that I've realized in moments of clarity have I fully internalized yet. And so at times I will pretend myself beyond my true evolution and it is painful, but I will only realize later. <laughs> I will only realize later, you know, there's these moments, somebody does something and then I go, wait a second, Steli. You know, somebody does something that I did not like. And then I go, well, let's look inside. What is, you know, going on with you? What's truly happening here? This person's just a teacher. What is he or she illuminating? And then I find something and I go, oh, bummer. I'm really the idiot here. This is really my fear of this or fear of that. And I go through all of that and that might be enlightening. Sometimes it's relieving. Sometimes it really works. And sometimes I just pretend, you know, sometimes I just go, I don't say it, but say I'm above this feeling right now. I'm above acting like this. We are better than this, Steli. And anytime that happens, even if I come up with some beautiful, kind, loving, enlightened idea of what the real situation is, what I do at the same time is I, I lie to myself about who I am in that moment. And not in every moment am I as enlightened. Not in every moment am I as wise as we know in most moments. I'm just a little child trying to, it's walking in adult clothes and it's like, I'm 40 now and I run a business and I'm a father of sons and I am a productive member of society. I know things, I can handle things, but you know, on the soul level, the heart level, it's just a little baby. I think remembering that pretending really is a big part of our suffering and that our challenge in life is not to be more kind. Some people do that, right? They're like, oh, I'm just going to be a nicer person. And they're so nice, but there's no kindness in that niceness and there's no honesty in it either. And so they create a lot of suffering for themselves and dare I say, they might be liked, on the surface by some people in some situations, but they're treated really badly. So I doubt how great the love is that flows freely to them. And so some people are like, I'm going to be nice. That's going to be my way of being good and worthy and valuable and loved. And nice is not honest, right? And so they pretend and then they create great suffering. And some people go, I'm going to be really loving, you know, and, and some people go, a lot of people, Go, oh, I've now discovered spirituality. I'm going to be more spiritual, more soulful. It's not just logic and rationale. It's not just who is right and who is wrong. There's more to life than flesh and blood. And I want to be, have higher ideals and ideas in how I live my life and be very peaceful and nonviolent and all these beautiful ideas and concepts. But then we stumble and we pretend to be spiritual when being honest is really the highest level of an expression of spirituality or soulfulness, honesty. It's just not as pretty as the white gown and the lotus pose, you know, and the little candle and, oh, you know, whatever the mantra and all that. It doesn't look as pretty because at times it isn't. Because at times my truth is beyond my ideals, is beyond my ideas. It's beyond my 
perception or my, you know, wishful thinking of who I truly am. Sometimes the truth is not that pretty, you know, and I'm just like a little piece of shit or I'm a little selfish person or I'm a little confused or I'm a little insecure or something. And I want to be beyond that. And by being beyond that, I hide the truth from myself and others. And then suffering starts. There's nothing spiritual in that. There's nothing beautiful in that. I was talking to a friend a couple of days ago and he was saying, all right, I wanted to be cool with you about this topic. But the truth is, I'm not that cool. And what you just said, I laughed at, but it actually hurt me. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, I wish I was cooler and I didn't care about this little joke, but it kind of, yeah, it sucks to say, but it kind of hurts. And I said, being honest is much more important than being cool. Fuck being cool. Being honest is also much harder to do than being cool. Being cool is pretty easy. I've done it for many years. As a template, you can learn it from many people out there. But being honest, there's not many people out there you can learn that from. And it's much scarier than being cool and much scarcer. Yeah, that's where everything starts. You're not honest with yourself. You can't be honest with other people. You can pretend to be honest. It's another thing. I know people that are, oh, I always want to be honest. I'm always going to tell people the truth. I'm going to, you know, tell people even things that are, you know, ridiculous or that are maybe painful. And I'm always going to be like, well, I'm so ethical. I always say the truth. But when you are around them, when you get to know them, it seems from the outside that they're more concerned about saying what they think in the moment than about really knowing what's inside of them and what's truly happening. And that I always say the truth, there's an honesty that is lacking oftentimes. You know, an honesty to, you know, instead of just saying, hey, you know, I'm pissed that you did this. Look how, you know, I say always the truth. I'm pissed. You shouldn't be doing this. You know, this is not right behavior and I won't have it. That's more honest than not saying it. Yeah. Yeah. But did you ask yourself why this hurt you so much? You know, if the other person really did something or if it's just your ego or if it's your insecurity or if it's your fear, do you ask yourself if you do the same behavior many, many times to other people, you know, which in this case may be true, but you're like, I'm always honest and if people can't take it, it's their problem. I'm honest. I'm always honest. Yeah, but that's not honesty, right? You might say what you want to say in certain moments, but that may or may not be really honest. Being really honest with oneself, you know, that's the trickiest, the simplest and trickiest in the world to do. And right? it's this, whatever quote it is with, you know, we're the easiest person to deceive ourselves. Like, you know, be careful not to be deceived and you're the easiest person to deceive yourself. It's very easy for us to look away from the inside. It's very easy. Out, Somebody once said, in the outside is escape, in the inside is the doorway, you know? So, well, whenever we look outside, we're looking away from the doorway to the truth. You know, what's inside of me? What's really going on right now? But all these concepts, even the nice ones from a society point of view, I want to be more spiritual. I want to say the truth more. I want to set more boundaries. I want to be nicer. I want to be kinder. I want to be nonviolent. I want to be more supportive. I want to be friendlier. I want to be more open-minded. I want to be, you know, more logical. I want to be more emotional. All these things are but concepts. And they're all, you know, if you just go, let me be more honest with myself, you're on the path to visit all these places, you know, but the real version of them versus when you go to the shortcut of, oh, I want to be a more spiritual, but I'm living a more spiritual life right now. That already sounds wrong. <laughs> it's already a statement that doesn't sound very spiritual at all. It sounds like very egotistical and very like, like you're wearing this like a new jacket that you're proud of. Ah, oh, look, I'm now spiritual. So a lot of the topics that we discussed on the podcast, you know, over two years now, a lot of different ideas and ideals and concepts and like you could throw all of that out the window and just every day chip away at being a bit more honest with you and then living your truth more fully. Because that's another thing. Sometimes we like to look at our truth and feel, you know, feel good about that fact. Oh, I'm so self-critical. Like that can be a, a form of like, look how I'm so honest with myself because I'm so critical. Being critical as a default is not honesty. You can be harshly critical and harshly loving and kind and supportive. That seems like it would be more honest in the moment you are what is true in that moment versus I'm always critical with myself. Hence, I'm so honest with myself. Not really. And just knowing 
yeah, I am afraid to confront this friend or I am afraid to make this change in my life or I am actually not feeling good right now. Something is not okay right now with me. That's the beginning of honesty, but it only matters if we are then living more honestly, you know, if I then do something about it, then I'm really breaking the cycle of torment inside. You know, maybe it'll be bad, maybe it won't, but I won't be suffering anymore. You know, I might have some pain, might have some doubt, maybe something will go bad, but I'm not suffering anymore. I'm not tormenting myself because I live the truth. This is the conversation we need to have. This is the thing I need to change. Last night, when we drove back, we're driving all day, checking out Den Haag and Rotterdam and all that. We came back. I was very tired. And part of me said, just go up, read a little and go to sleep. But then there was another part of me that said, when you asked, hey, do you want some of the dinner that I'm making? That said, hmm, that dinner will feel pleasurable. And although I don't need it right now and I'm not hungry, and it just blurted out, yep. And then when I said yes, it was already a commitment. I'm like, ah, now I said yes. Now I have to, <laughs> you know, it's the little lies we tell ourselves. And then I eat the dinner that I didn't, it was yummy, but I didn't even, I was not hungry in the moment. And then because I was in the act of eating, I'm like, well, let me have some of these chocolate nuts. And I'm eating, and all of a sudden I'm eating way too much and I don't want any of it. And it's funny, I hadn't watched, you know, YouTube in a long time. But two, three days ago, I watched something and it was sort of, it involved a bunch of comedians that I like or that I know of, let me say that. And there was some drama between them, some fight. And because I don't watch anything anymore, I'm so out of the loop. So when I saw that, I clicked on it. I'm like, oh, what is this? This is, this is juicy, interesting, fun stuff. And there's all this drama going on. And I'm super like, I'm half an hour, I'm watching this. And then when I ended it, I could sense an urge to watch more because YouTube was full with reaction videos to the drama and reaction and analysis and what happened afterwards. And I'm like, ah, all right, I need to stay away from that. Well, last night after I overate, I'm exhausted. I go up into my room. What do I do? I have the book and my phone. And I go, ah, I know this is the wrong thing to do, but let me watch some more of that drama. And I did. And it just felt horrible, but it had this quality of, you know, I can't control myself anymore. I'm sort of in a, like what you would assume a drug addict feels like. I'm in sort of this addictive, more of a compulsive state where I keep clicking the next video and all the while knowing that I'm going down a bad rabbit hole. This is not going to be good or feel good to me. This morning I wake up and, well, first I thought, wow, there were times where I did this a lot. Where like late at night, I'm exhausted. I would add another three hours of watching fight analysis or some just YouTube clips for hours and hours. Although I'm way past my point. I'm like, how did I do it? How did I survive? This feels so bad. And then my next thought was, why is this so compelling to me right now? Like I haven't been compelled to watch anything, especially not like this kind of a low quality, zero calorie content. Like, what is it right now that makes me so compelled? And at first, the answers always seem to be like, oh, well, I don't know. Everything is perfect right now. And then the next thought that I had was, well, there's a lot of travel coming up for me. And not just like traveling for like super chill times, a lot of intense things that are upcoming and... I thought, well, maybe I'm more stressed about it than I allow myself to feel. And so now that the days are closed and in a couple of days, I'll be leaving the Netherlands to drive to Germany. And then two days later, I'm flying from Germany to the US. Now that the travel like continues, now I'm trying to hide from how I really feel about it, the stress that I really have inside about it. So that magnet of zero calorie, stupid, thoughtless, just watch something, you don't have to feel anything, is very magnetic, right? So I have to look at that and go, well, logically, I don't agree with this because I haven't had active thoughts I could catch that were saying these things to me. But emotionally, yeah, it does feel true. It does feel like, yeah, probably starting to have a sense of stress around the idea of so much travel. And now the task is, can I be more honest with that? You know, and I can't stop, like I'll just replace one distraction with another unless I'm willing to embody the truth. Unless I'm really, I can go, no more YouTube. Stelly, you're going to the gym. This week, you're going to go to the gym every day twice and no YouTube clips. I can do that with pure willpower, but it will be as untrue as what I was doing before. It's slightly better for me, but it's still going to make me suffer as long as I'm not willing 
to slow down and go, what am I really feeling? Who am I really right now? What is the honest truth in this very moment? Hmm. Rationally, I don't agree with this, but emotionally, I seem a little tight. Emotionally, I don't feel great excitement about the upcoming travel. I feel tension. All right, well, let's accept that. Let's have a little grace for that. How can I ease that stress? How can I live with it? Not push it away, but also not amplify it and make it overwhelming. Just be there for it. Be there for me. What do I need to be for myself to be a good friend to someone that's a little stressed out about the upcoming travel? How would I be to my children if they were nervous about all the travel? I fucking hug them. I kiss them. I hold them. Both try to see them and hold space for them, but probably crack some jokes so they are releasing some of the tension and they realize, you know, we're not going to war. You know, we're just traveling a little bit, you know, hosting some groups that are important to us. And I would stay with them with a patience that is not in a rush and in a hurry to move on to the next thing. I wouldn't be like, all right, you feel better now? We feel better. Everybody, we feel better, right? This was not a problem. Okay, cool. Let's keep working then. You know, I wouldn't do that if I really wanted to love my children. I deserve the same thing. I need to be honest. All right, right now, maybe I feel a little stressed out about the upcoming travel. Maybe right now I just need to acknowledge that and give myself some space and find some more grace and humor and pay a bit more attention to myself. Anytime I'm trying to run away, you know, I'm not getting enough attention or any attention feels really unsettling until it finally penetrates and I feel seen. I feel like I really know who I am and I really know my truth in this moment. And, you know, I could meditate all day long and I could do more mantras and I could read Buddha's teachings and, you know, tell friends to hear about their problems, to tell them how to live a more spiritual life. Or I can just, you know, take care of myself right now and feel my truth and then live it, not run away from it.